Well, we've continued our travels across southwest Montana on the 52nd Montana Angus Tour. One of those stops was the Red Bluff Station, part of Montana State University's uh, land grant mission. And joining us here today is Dr. Tim Del Curto. He oversees the Animal Range Sciences Department at MSU, but uh, you've had other roles in the right. Animal Range Sciences right. Department. But uh, what was it like having the tour stop by Red Bluff, but also showcase the MSU Angus herd that got its start from Angus producers here in Montana. Yeah, it was for us. It was very <laughs> rewarding. Um, it's sort of funny. I was hired a little over nine years ago, and uh, within the first two or three months, uh, Montana Angus Association uh, had a member come and <laughs> visit me, uh, Tim Skinner, and basically said we really want to work with you to establish a uh, purebred herd. And to be honest, I was reluctant. <clears throat> um, it wasn't really until Tim <laughs> made the comment that as Land Grant University, you need to reflect the industry that, that we have here in the state. And the fact is Montana's the number one uh, seed stock producing state in the United States. And just because of our, <clears throat> you know, we're also number one export of genetics worldwide, which, which makes us really the center of that. And so uh, over a series of meetings, uh, we decided to establish the Montana uh, State University Angus program. Um, started out with donations of heifers, uh, <clears throat> ended up um, all told, I think the, the Montana Angus industry is, is probably given in live animals, embryos, and, and in-kind support close to a half a million dollars to Montana State. <clears throat> and. Uh, which is great for us, but I think the, the real thing is, is it brings the industry to campus. They get to mingle with our students. Our students um, get a lot of hands-on experience with really quality cattle. And um, I think it's been a win-win for everyone. And uh, probably the big thing um, <clears throat> for us has also been um, the research platform, yeah. which, which I didn't expect. But uh, we worked with the American Angus Association as well as the Montana Angus producers um, and did a lot of research looking at things that's important to not only our producers but the people of our goals. So, now yeah. also, it's a rough, rugged landscape <laughs> at Red Bluff yeah. too. Yeah. So these cattle have to thrive in that environment and you're also calving in a different time interval compared to other MSU uh, uh, cattle focused operations. Right, right. In fact, and that, and that was part of, uh, we had a almost a year of meetings where we, where we met with the, the essentially the board, Montana Angus Association. Um, Red Bluff Research Center is roughly a little over 10,000 acres. Uh, it's ideal for kind of a low input range kind of operation. We were just in the process of moving to May calving. <clears throat> and so as these discussions were going on, it's like, this is gonna be different than almost any kind of Angus ranch that I'm, I'm familiar with. But, um, you know, as, as we laid it out, we thought, well, what a better place to test out Montana Angus genetics in a, in, a, in a systems approach where we graze our goals 10 plus months a year. Uh, for the last five years, I think four out of the five yeah. we've grazed year round. It was great talking with donors to right. the program that sent heifers several yeah. years ago yeah. and seeing them look at those cows that are still in the herd. Yep. Yep. And uh, I spoke to one of those producers from Shipwheel Cattle Company, uh, yeah. Lori Swanson, saying, yeah. she's still here. Yeah. And yeah. to hear that, saying yeah. that, that's an investment on their part, it but is. to still yeah. see those, uh, those cattle showing through, shining through, because truly these are some of the top genetics, not only in Montana, mm -hmm. but the world yeah. that were donated to help benefit the Angus <clears throat> breed. We were so pleased in 2018 and 2019, I think we had close to 50. Uh, the first year was, was bred heifers, second year was just yearling heifers. Um, and, and you're right, I mean, they were, they were uh, um, some of the best genetics you can find. Now, <clears throat> there's a few that, that didn't make it in our program. You know, one of the things we select for is cattle that work in really a fairly rugged, mm -hmm. challenging, nutritionally challenging range environment. And, and we had a few that came in open and, yep. and they went down the road. But, but that happens on every operation. Every operation, and, and right now our herd's about 50% registered Angus, 50% commercial Angus. Uh, our goal in the next three to five years is to make the whole thing registered. Um, <clears throat> they're doing great, they're doing great. I think uh, this past year we're 95% conception. We'll preg check here in a few weeks, yeah. and, and I'm guessing we'll be the same. So. 
my last area, obviously marketing these genetics. You're not just keeping them and, no. and, and keeping them out at Red Bluff and they're, <laughs> you know, you're not just uh, watching them. You are marketing them. Uh, talk yeah. about that collaboration with the Treasure State Bull Test. Yeah, uh, basically um, this year, I think we have about 24 intact bulls. We'll go through them and, and we'll do kind of a keep coal, you know, early on. Um, we're down, we've narrowed it down to about 24. We'll send our tan best. Well, not quite our 10 best. We might keep one or two uh, for, for our So you herd. can covet them a little longer, yeah. we can say. <laughs> and, and then we'll send the, the 10 best remaining bulls to Treasure State. Our goal long term is to at some point have a sea stock production course that will culminate in a live auction on yeah. campus. But um, we're still working at that. But as department head, I think I'm in a good spot maybe. To do well, that. Maybe. Yeah. You have, you have yeah. your own ear. I, I, yeah, I have my own ear and I, I have the dean's ear too. <laughs> well, again, uh, Dr. Del Curdle, thanks for yep. joining us. And, and we gave some uh, giveaways to folks in the drawing, and we got some NDSU and South Dakota yep. State uh, yep. uh, fans that maybe will maybe be converted. Uh, we're trying to convert them to Bobcat fans. <laughs> I think the best way to do that is convert them on the football field. But we'll, <clears> yeah, <throat> conversions, first downs, and touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. But again, uh, Dr. Tim Del Curdle joining us. And of course, a lot of great support there in the College of Agriculture. If you haven't done so, go check out the interviews we did with so many of the College of Ag extension and research leaders during our homecoming coverage that we had a few weeks ago in Bozeman and also hear from the new president of Montana State University, Dr. Brock Tessman joining us, big supporter of ag. Yes, he, he doesn't is. know a lot about it, he admits that, but, but uh, it's great to hear that he yeah. knows how important agriculture is. He's been on Bar Farm three times yeah. in about two or three months, so that's, that's, yeah. that's a good sign. Yeah. Well, well, again, friends, we're gonna continue to have all of our conversations from the 52nd Montana Angus Tour across Southwest Montana with uh, exhibitors and of course some of those attendees coming from far and wide. And if you join us here today, make sure and subscribe to all the Western Ag Network platforms. I'm Lane Nordlund. We'll catch you next time.